He's like, if we were in Nazi Germany and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber, I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good. This is bad. This is wrong. We should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there. You're doing a great job. You can't save everybody. You're, you know, you're amazing. You're a great nurse. I don't know what to think anymore. I just saw a second video of a nurse up in New York City claiming that the doctors and nurses up there are just killing patients with reckless abandon. See for yourself. Um, a patient had a heart rate of 40 and the resident started doing chest compressions on him, which is not what you do. You just externally pace them or you, you know, give them some atropine. And then he decides to push Epi. He throws some pads on them, on him to, to defibrillate the guy in bradycardia. Okay, he has a heart rate of 40 in a stable, you know, bradycardic rhythm. We just need to give him some, like some atropine and pace them. And I was literally ran out of like the patient's room to get like the director of nursing who was standing out there. And I'm like, can you stop him? He's going to kill that patient. He's going to kill that patient if he defibrillates him with bradycardia and a heart rate of 40. And the director of nursing just shook his head and I turned around and he killed the dude. <sighs> there was a nurse who played, placed an NG tube into, you know, um, into some guy's lungs and filled his lungs with tube feeding. There was a nurse who confused uh, a long-acting ac insulin with a short-acting acting insulin and gave 30 units of a fast-acting insulin and killed the guy. It's just here they're just gonna let them rot on the vent. They're medically mismanaging these patients. And like, I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not professing to be a doctor by any means. But there's, like I said, basic standards of care that we have to do. They didn't want to start antibiotics. Day shift nurse finally got a chest x-ray. He has full-blown pneumonia now. Like, I've been telling them this for a while, but because he didn't have a fever, they didn't want to give him antibiotics. <sighs> we have a nurse who fell asleep at the nurse's station while we were all in rooms and her norepinephrine ran out and the guy had no blood pressure and didn't perfuse his brain and I'm pretty sure he's brain dead. That same nurse is now running a CRRT machine, a dialysis-like machine that she has never done before. She said she'll figure it out. And we have a nurse who does CRRT in there. She has a different patient load. We told them like, hey, let's just swap these nurses so the one that knows how to work this machine can work this machine, but they didn't want to do that. So I'm pretty sure that patient will be dead here in a couple hours. They don't care what is happening to these people. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. I mean, we're not gonna save everybody, that's fine. Like, come on guys, we're not God. What I need is someone to help me save these people from being killed, okay? From gross negligence and complete medical mismanagement. And no one is listening to me. You know what I and try and talk with some of the other nurses here. And they're like, well, you can't save everybody. And they all know what's happening. They all agree with me and they all just shake their heads. And I'm like, am I the only one who is not a sociopath? I mean, guys, they literally don't even know when they're dead. I am literally telling you that they're murdering these people and nobody will listen to me. I watched an anesthesiologist place an ET tube and rushed for their esophagus and the guy choked to death on his own blood. COVID didn't place that ET tube incorrectly. All right, guys, I'm going to the unit. Let's see how they kill him there, okay? Stay safe. Stay out of NYC for your healthcare. Okay, so that's quite a lot of interesting content, is it not? She's claiming a lot of things similar to the last video that I did a reaction to, which was uh, Sarah NP claiming that the doctors and nurses up there are committing murder. And she did kind of echo some similarities. I actually believe Nicole a lot more than I did Sarah. First, Nicole is actually a first-hand source. Second thing, she's also claiming a lot of things that have happened which sound horrible, but at the same time, honestly do sound unfortunately believable. I do not think that the doctors and nurses up there are murdering patients, nor do I think any of this is on purpose. I think a lot of what's happening is likely mistakes. If some of these things are true, I don't think they're intentional. I think they're accidents. Now that's not to excuse what's happening, what's potentially happening at least, because medical errors do account for an awful lot of unwanted medical complications and even death. These are things that ought to be investigated by the proper authorities, JCO, the Board of Nursing, the Board of Medicine, these types of agencies should be looking into these kinds of claims because they are quite bold and they are claiming some pretty bad things, so I think they definitely deserve a look. And it got me thinking like, why New York? Why is all this going down here? At this point, Nicole even admits in her video that the staffing is not really an issue at this point, that they are appropriately staffed, that is just seemingly mismanaged. 
She described a situation where you had two nurses, one of which knew how to work a dialysis machine and the other did not, and for some reason, they had the opposite patient loads that they should have had. The one who knew what to do didn't have the dialysis patient. The one who had never done it before just said, oh, I'll figure it out, and they didn't switch. That's just stupid. Why would you do that? She also claims a resident was doing CPR on a patient with a pulse. If a resident is defibrillating a person in PEA or with a pulse, either way, they're wrong. So that's weird. Because of COVID-19, a lot of regulations were eased throughout the entire country, and maybe some of these residents are practicing a little bit beyond their scope because of the situation that we're finding ourselves in, and maybe that's why some of these things are happening a little bit more than normal. I remember a little while ago that the resident laws had to be changed because a resident up in New York ended up giving somebody a medicine that they should not have given them, and they put them in the serotonin syndrome, and I believe they killed them and because of this actually the laws that residents have to work under actually changed to limit the amount of time that they're able to be in the hospital back to back because before they're basically living in the hospital and now they're actually capped at a certain hour requirement so that they do get some sleep and it's hopefully a little bit safer but once again guys I come back to the question of why New York over and over. I mean, they're not the only people dealing with the coronavirus. Sure, they're a hot spot, but at the same time, it's just an interesting coincidence that over and over again, they seem to be having some issues. And it's not just related to the coronavirus. I actually came across something pretty interesting. I looked at hospital deaths across the United States, and I found that the average was 20.8% over the age of 65 with chronic medical conditions in the United States. New York was the worst state, by far, twice as bad as the best state and a solid amount worse than the average. So then it brings us to the next question. Are people in New York just unhealthier than the general population? Or perhaps is the medical care up there a little bit subpar? I really don't know. It would explain why a lot of these nurses are coming to New York on assignment to try to help out with COVID-19 and finding a lot of things that they do not like, maybe that they do better where they're from in their hospitals. It could also be explained that the patients perhaps are a little bit more fragile living in New York than in other places of the country. And if that is the case, it is possible that they may have more complications and more deaths from the same type of illness, just because they're in a less healthy baseline. I don't know, but I definitely do think all these things deserve a look from these regulatory boards that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it, it's concerning. I don't know if I believe all of the claims. Some of them seem pretty far-fetched. But once again, these claims should not be taken lightly. You should investigate them. That's what I said in the last video as well. I do think that, you know, every claim deserves an investigation to see if it has any merit. And if, you know, maybe some of it's untrue, but some of it is true, the stuff that is probably needs to be addressed. So guys, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.